Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Nandi Keshwara said, Once long ago, O foremost among yogis, Vishnu was having a nap on his serpent couch. He was surrounded by the goddess of fortune and his attendants. Brahma, foremost among Vedic scholars, chanced to come there. He asked the lotus-eyed handsome Vishnu, who was lying there, Who are you lying here like a haughty person, even after seeing me? I have come here. Get up, O oh dear, and see me, who am your lord. Expiatory rites are ordained for that spiteful wretch who behaves like a haughty fool at the visit of an honorable elderly person. On hearing these words, Vishnu was angry, but assuming a calm exterior, he said, O oh dear, hail thee, welcome, please sit on this couch. How is it that thy face is agitated, and thy eyes look curious? Brahma said, Dear Vishnu, know me to have come with the speed of the time. I am to be honored greatly. O oh dear one, I am the protector of the world, the grandfather, and your protector as well. Vishnu said, O oh dear one, the whole universe is situated within me, but your way of thinking is like that of a thief. You are born of the lotus sprung from my navel region. You are my son. Your words are therefore futile. Nandikeshwara said, arguing with each other like this, each saying that he is better than the other and claiming to be the Lord, they got ready to fight like two foolish goats desirous of killing each other. The two heroic deities, seated on their respective vehicles, the swan and Garuda, fought together. The attendants of Brahma and Vishnu also came into the clash. In the meantime, different groups of devas, moving about in aerial chariots, came there to witness the wonderful fight. Witnessing from the heavens, they scattered flowers everywhere. The Garuda vehicled Vishnu became infuriated and discharged unbearable arrows and many kinds of weapons on the chest of Brahma. The infuriated Brahma also hurled many arrows of fiery fury and different kinds of weapons on Vishnu. The Devas commented on this wondrous fight and were much agitated. Vishnu, in his great fury and mental agitation, breathed hard and discharged the Maheshwara weapon over Brahma. Annoyed at this, Brahma aimed the terrible Pashupata weapon at the chest of Vishnu. The weapon, rising high in the sky, blazing like ten thousand suns, with thousands of terrible pointed spikes, roared awfully like a blast of wind. These two weapons of Brahma and Vishnu thus faced each other in a terrible clash. Such was the mutual fight between Brahma and Vishnu. Then, O oh dear, the devas in their helpless agitation and vexation talked among themselves as people do at the time of war between their monarchs. The three-pointed trident-bearing deity the Supreme Brahman, Shiva, is the cause of creation, maintenance, annihilation, concealment, and blessing. Without his corroboration, even a blade of grass cannot be split by any individual anywhere. Thinking thus in their fright, they desired to go to Shiva's abode, and accordingly came to the summit of Kailash, where the moon-crested god resided. On seeing that region of Parameshwara in the shape of Omkara, they bent their heads down in reverence and entered the palace. 
There they saw the supreme leader of the devas shining brilliantly on a gem-set seat in the company of Uma on an altar in the middle of the council chamber. His right leg was kept over the knee of the left. His lotus-like hands were placed over his legs. His attendants were all around him. He had all good characteristic features. He was being fanned by the specialists in that art, ladies of pointed attention. The Vedas were extolling him. The Lord was blessing everyone. On seeing the Lord thus, the Devas shed tears of joy. O oh, dear one, the hosts of Devas knelt down and bowed, even from a great distance. The Lord, on seeing the Devas, beckoned them to him through his attendants. Then the crest jewel of Devas, Shiva, addressed them gravely with sweet auspicious words causing them great delight.